Hello, hello, hello. Do men cheat? Do women sabotage their relationships when they're scared and blame someone else? What about men having a safe space to talk? We'll find out so many answers to this question from my guest today on this episode of Shine with Kendellanese as we focus on relationships in season 11. Y'all, we have been rocking for 11 seasons. And this season, we have had amazing guests come through to talk about relationships of all kinds. Heartbreaks, great relationships. Someone even did a love scan on me live. There are so many great stories out there. Um, And when I say great, I don't mean perfect. I don't mean always happy. But finding the lesson and the blessing in these relationships. I love to hear the journey of others. And I love when people keep it honest and real when it comes to relationships. So my guest today is an author and podcaster. And one thing he does is keeps it all the way 100 when it comes to relationships. Because he is a relationship expert. He has a podcast and we'll talk about that. And he talks about relationships often and he talks a lot about it. So he's not afraid to give his opinion. And I love to have people like that on my podcast. But as always, let's start with this week's life note. All right, it's time for this week's life note. All right, it's, it's time for this, this week's, life, week's note. life note. So let's see. So life notes are a saying or a quote that will carry you through this show or the rest of the week or maybe even the rest of your life. It's ma- it's relationships um, and quotes that make you say, hmm. Now, to make you say, hmm, that's something from the old school when it comes to our city of hall. You might not know that, but if you do, I'm glad you do. All right. This uh, quote is, a successful marriage requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. That's Mignon McLaughlin. So basically what she is saying is that you have to choose to love. It requires falling in love many times, always with the same person. So as you grow and evolve in your relationship and your marriage, um, you fall in love again. You begin to see someone differently if you continue to communicate and grow. And that's what it's about. So it's not always about running to the other side. It's about falling in love with your person. So you got to like the person. You got to get along with the person. You got to communicate with the person. And you too can fall in love over and over again. And many people do that in their relationships and they're able to have sustainable relationships. And some relationships aren't meant to go the distance. And we're going to talk a little about that. And also... We're going to find out for the first time if my guest today, Lopez Lassane, is married. Because he be talking about a lot of different stuff on his podcast when it comes to relationships. And I asked him finally, hey, you talk about marriage and relationships, but are you even married? Find out the answer on this episode of Shine with Kendellani. So go get your water. Go get everything you need to get. And tune in and I'll be back at the end. If this is your first time listening to Shine with Kendellanese, I'm so glad that you're here. As always, welcome in and tell a friend. And to all my loyal listeners, thank you for repeatedly coming back over and over and over again. Time is a commodity that we cannot get back. So I am glad that you chose to spend your time with me. I got another life note for you. A good marriage is one where each partner secretly suspects they got the better deal. Love that. All right, like on with today's show. To have my guest with me on Shine with Kendellanese, it is podcaster and author Lopez 
and I want to make it a little sane. And uh, did I say it right? Shine. Kendall Lemus. You got it. Okay. I want to make sure. So I had the pleasure of being on his podcast, and we talked a little bit about my career, and we talked about current events, as well as touch on dating. And because this is what he does, he's a relationship expert. That's what I'm going to call him. If you listen to his podcast, they talk about some things. So his opinion is very open. And even he told me here, he said, we can talk about anything. So today's topic is going to be what men really are looking for. And we're going to talk about online dating. Welcome to Shine with Candela Nees. I'm happy to be here. I'm, I've been looking forward to it. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, he is mad chill. He's like really, really chill. Even when he was interviewing me, he wasn't all hype. He was like, yeah, so, um, and you guys have to uh, look at that episode of his podcast, but he's real chill. So I'm going to try to see if I can get you, uh, Lopez, a little uh, rambunctious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm just, I, I, I like to stay level headed, you know. I yeah, don't, I don't, I don't get too high, I don't get too low. Yeah, yeah. So I want you to. You are a podcaster and an author, and we're going to do it in reverse. Let's talk about that for a moment, and then we're going to get into the subject. Tell the people the name of your book, and tell the people the name of your podcast. The name of my book. And the name of my podcast is called Love Love Can't Wait. And basically, you know, it's about self-love, loving yourself, and having the best relationship you can have with yourself. That way you can have the best relationship with others. Man, you see how he he just going straight give it yeah. to you. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And that's so important as a life coach. I often talk about that. Like you, like today I went, you know, spent the day by myself, a part of the day. I went and got some uh, Italian ice. I went for a walk. I went to the park. And if I can't enjoy being around me, then how in the world am I going to expect anybody else to even want to be around me? So I got to be able to love myself and enjoy my time with myself, right? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, the if it's if you, if you if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to have relationships with other people. For and sure, I think a lot of times we tend to put the you know the, the the cattle before the horse, like some people like to say. We think that somehow we can kind of like uh, leap over taking care of ourselves. And we, we, we want to invite other people into our lives to try to make our lives better. And it just doesn't work out like that. Right. Why do you think people try to get other people to um, make their lives better and get them to love them when they don't even want to love themselves or don't even know how? Why do you think people uh, try to put the cart before the horse, if you will? I think a lot, a lot of us just don't know. We, we haven't been taught. And uh, unfortunately, you know, we don't get to pick our parents. A lot of us had bad role models growing up, you know, and we, you know, we mimic who we saw while we were growing up. A lot of us just don't know no better. And then some of us have been dealt a bad hand in, in life. You know, we, like I said, we don't get, to, we don't get to pick our parents. Yeah. Some of us, some of us grew up in a bad household, you know, it wasn't healthy, you know, maybe, your, your parents were a little, I don't know, messed up or whatever. Or had. And that's just that's just what it was. And a lot of times, as we get older, you know, we, we don't, a lot of us don't deal with the issues that we might have. We mm-hmm. just kind of let it linger or just kind of throw it behind us and just keep it moving. You know, that's where a lot of the problems stem from. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, because... As parents often say, well, there's no handbook to uh, raise a child or we do the best that we can. But even I talk about this in my um, in my book is 
you can't even fault your parents because they're dealing with trauma and drama and childhood wounds as well, you know, and each generation is doing that. And that's why it's so important to stop it at, at, at some point in some generation and say, listen, somebody needs to get some therapy. Somebody needs to start healing some stuff because it just trickles down. And, and hopefully, and what I see is that each generation you know, it gets better and better. But like you said, folks are just trying to figure it out and then they get into a relationship and think that they are healed or fine. And then relationships are mirrors often of ourselves. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, when I was growing up, my parents were smart enough to know that they didn't know everything. Mm-hmm. They, they couldn't teach me everything. Mm-hmm. So what they would do is introduce me to other people mm-hmm. that knew. And and that's when I realized that it wasn't like they were like neglecting me. They mm-hmm. just didn't know. They only knew how it was when they were growing up. Yeah. They couldn't tell me what was going on like 2,000 miles away where I was located at the time. So they would say if they didn't know the answer, they was like, you know what, I know someone that that knows the answer. I'll wow. get back to you on that. So, that, you know, it, that's uh-huh. why they say it takes a village. It, it takes a village. You you don't know everything. You yep. know, I mean, people say, oh, you fake it till you make it. Yep. You don't have to fake it till you make it. <laughs> there's, there's other people out here, you know? That's such a, oh, wow. That's such a wise <laughs> point. And I commend your parents for saying, you know what? I don't know the answer. I can't, let me find somebody in this village who can help you with that. And I think that that's so huge because parents really have to start showing themselves human. And I remember my daughters used to be like, mom, that's because you're perfect and because you've never been. I said, well, honey, you know, when they got older, I said, let me tell y'all some things. And I think it's so important for, for us to tell our children our human stories and our men and women's stories and not just dad's and mom's stories. So they can understand when they might hit pitfalls or go through something that their parent has gone through it. Or if their parent hasn't, like you said, somebody in the village has gone through and can give words of wisdom um, throughout uh, that that child in an adult life. But I love that about your parents were very progressive in that manner to be able to do that. And did you find that freeing? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, um, well, yeah, my parents were, were always older than the mm-hmm. rest of the parents, mm-hmm. and the, the where the neighborhood neighborhood where I grew up at, mm-hmm. like some. Oh, when I was born, my mom was forty one. Okay, so she had me. She was like, you know, in her forties, and the mm-hmm. rest of the parents were like in the twenties and the early thirties. Yeah. So, so you know, um, you know, she would, um, you know. My parents were kind of like this. I had older brothers. This is it's a 15-year gap between my sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. So it would be like this. If I asked for something, if I wanted something, my my mom would, would reach out to my brothers and, and sisters and see what they would say. And if the majority rule, that will, that's what it's going to be. You weren't you know, getting it. It, <laughs> it wasn't like, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, she, they let me... Um, experiment and be free and you know play sports and try different things or whatever as long as it was positive and they would support me and get behind it they never said hey you can't do this you can't do that you know and looking back on it i wasn't even sure if they actually knew i could do it or not yeah regardless of what it was but as long as it was positive uh, it wasn't hurting nobody you know, I had I had a lot of freedom. Yeah. You know. What do you think some baggage what baggage do you think some men bring into relationships? Well from their childhood. Okay, or from assuming their past. that oh from childhood. Well, like I said, it depends on how how you grew up. Um like I said, my my parents Never said I couldn't do anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think a lot of parents. Well, let me tell you what I what I saw, what I heard when I was growing up. A lot of parents were telling their kids they can't do it. Mm. You know, I don't know how you're gonna do it. Money don't grow on trees, mm. and, and, and you know all these. Trees. You got McDonald's My money. Never, <laughs> yeah, my parents never 
They never talk like that. Yeah, that's good. I mean, they, maybe they talk like that in, you know, behind the scenes with just them two or whatever. But they never talk like that in front of me. So I never thought that I couldn't do it. I never had, like, the lack mentality, you ain't good enough, or you are, what they say, you are, I felt like a fraud or imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. I never felt any of that. Yeah. A lot of people say that. Online, I felt like an imposter. I like I never felt like an imposter. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I felt like everything I have achieved, I earned it. Yeah. I don't know what imposter syndrome is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that's that's powerful, actually. When you ha- were dating, are you single, married, engaged? I wanted to wait to ask you on here. Yeah, I'm married. Okay, so when you were dating, did, can you remember that far back? Yeah, yeah. When I was married, I was like the um, I would say, I was the guy that everybody wanted to be around. Okay. You know? Everyone to have a good time. People want to party. You know, um, I was like the uh, I, I, and I wasn't self centered by by any means. Mm-hmm. But I was a guy that people would call. Hey, what's going on, man? You know, what are we doing this weekend? Or uh, are you going to when's your next vacation I was really that guy when I, I'm when I'm st- kind of still that guy but yeah. I just got married and, and I got older and you know as we get older people you know people don't hang out as much as they used to yeah you know yeah but for the most part I was you know I'm pretty much the same guy I just got older and um it's the 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 crew is smaller yeah that's about it yeah and maturity yeah. So when you were yeah. dating, we talked about what kind of baggage men had, and you said t- it all depends on who raised them, childhood baggage. Yeah. What kind of baggage did you find women when you were dating on the dating scene? What kind of baggage did you find women to have? What was the common common thread in, in their baggage or their quote-unquote issues? Um, I would say... A lot of women were um, kind of insecure about certain things. Mm-hmm. Could be, could be their bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, could be uh, from previous relationships mm-hmm. they've had. Some women felt like, um, you know, they would blow the relationship because they felt like, well, I'm gonna leave anyway. You know, because the last mm. guy left, or or a guy. Before, before mm. the last one left, mm. whatever, everything. So when things are going well, we're vibing. We spend all this time together. After about six, eight, six, to eight months, all of a sudden, I mean, something weird happens. Something out of the blue happens, and I'm caught off guard. I'm like, hey, what's going on? You know? And you're like, well, you know, I'm just, uh, I ain't really feeling this no more. You know, um, wow. I feel like uh, uh, we. I need some time the, away or whatever. I'm like, so, you know, once you get down to it, it's usually something that happened in the past, you know, and that's where it really stems from. But then I'm like, at the time, I'm like, what I got to do with what that last guy did? Right, <laughs> right. I got to do that. And then... They might say something like, well, I know you don't got nothing to do with it, but that, that's just what happened, and I'm afraid of this. And, you know, it's all type of different scenarios that could have happened. But at the end of the day, it's fear-based. It's based on fear, you know? That, I mean, you know what? I can totally see that. So you're saying you're, you know, everything is going well within six to eight months. They like, you know, you think that everything is going towards something, and six to eight months before they get hurt or before they feel like you're going to do what the last one did, they call it off and like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. When they were just feeling it and just express to the guy that they were feeling it. And then when they get scared, they literally run scared and end the relationship and self-sabotage for the most part. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, and, and the families. The mm. families are... Let's um, talk about it. Let, I think a lot of... <sighs> I think a lot of women let their family members get too talk too about involved it. in their relationship. Talk about it. Yeah, I think like um, 
Because, right, you know, you have a, maybe she has a sister or sisters saying one thing. She might say, hey, I, I think your boyfriend's this and that. And, and I'm like, well, I don't know. Well, first of all, I don't know your sister. And I, I don't, is she going to be living with us? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you got the mom, you know, and if the mom doesn't like you, mm-hmm. it's, just, it's, just, it's probably not going to work. It's because yeah. it's like, because I'm dating you and your mom now. So that, that's, that's not going to work. So mm-hmm. I think a lot of women I've found, they their families have too much of a, uh, impact yeah in within their relationships that's that's a that's a common one that i've I ran into over years i totally re- agree with that directly and indirectly involved yeah. because i remember the first time i got married i was 20 years old i was 20 and i was you know in college leaving i literally left my mom's house and got married you know the house i grew up in got married and went with my ex-husband and i know at that young age he got me and my mother with my mother not even being there unintentionally because I didn't have experience in that area. So I was doing things the way she might've been doing things. You know what I mean? And not even knowing or her view was my view with me not even knowing because think about 20 years old, your brain doesn't even fully develop until you're 25. And I'm married at 20 and I'm doing things the way my mom did in the household or having a view per se that she had because I didn't even fully walk into my womanhood yet. So I think women can do that directly and indirectly because I had no clue until I looked back. And I said, I, I, and when I looked, you know, at, at my big age now, I look back, I was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know, you know. So I totally agree with that. And when you talk about self-sabotaging, you know, as when as a life coach, I speak to clients who do that often in all areas. What do you think that's about, that self-sabotage, not wanting to experience, like, true happiness? And since we're talking about relationships, true happiness and love in relationships. I think a lot of people deep down, they feel like they don't deserve it. That's what it comes down mm-hmm. to. That's why they self-sabotage. That's why they don't break patterns. They 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 continuously start a new relationship and, and keep doing the same thing over mm-hmm. and over. It might be a different person, but it's the same habits over Talk and over. Talk about it. And a lot of people, feel, I think, a lot of people feel like they just they just don't deserve it. They're not enough. I'm probably not gonna, you know, be better in my better off than my parents or whatever and they and a lot of people listen to people that haven't had any success in anything talk about it <laughs> i mean I, i'm like because i'd be like hey why why are you listening to her talk about it i mean why are you listening to him i mean unless you want to be like them you've seen how they turned out mm-hmm. i mean so why are you even listening to her? i know mm-hmm. some women that's in their 40s and 50s they're still listening to their parents that failed them. Yep. <laughs> that's that's so mean, true. Uh, Talk about it. You tell I told y'all he was gonna tell it like it was, like it is, like friends, it shall be. Yeah, and their friends are failing. Their friends haven't had no successful long term relationship ever. So I'm like, why are you listening to them? What I mean what is there something about them that you take seriously because I don't I haven't heard it Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've been around them just as long as you have Mm -hmm. so why are you even them serious when it comes to I'm I'm talking like these people I know personally they always have an opinion about everything Mm -hmm. but if you look at their life their track record they they fail in every category (laughs) Now, do you think it's failing? Like, say somebody failed at work or a relationship or whatever. At love, do you think it's failing or do you think that they're they're learning? Well, not the ones you talked about that keep doing the same thing, keep bumping their head and getting stuck on stupid. Not those, but the ones that say, hmm, let me fall back a little bit to see where I can move differently. 
Um, would you say that it's a failure or would you say that it's lessons learned? Because I think it depends on how you look at it. Well, that's great if they're doing that. But mm-hmm. then these people I'm talking about, they're not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't changed anything for yeah. the past 10, 15, 20 oh, years. My. It's the same thing over and over again. Now, if you, maybe you made a couple of mistakes and you mm-hmm. failed in the past, but then you like, you know, you fell back mm-hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm going to try to figure this thing out. Yeah. Great. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm, but I'm not talking about them people. <laughs> you know, I'm talking about the people that can continuously fail, self-sabotage. They always got to always have an opinion. Mm-hmm. They always got the answers <laughs> for your problem, but they don't got the answer for theirs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Because people, I think people learn a little bit and they try to do the best that they can. And maybe they're trying to prevent the other people from going down the path that they went. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But um, when we talk about (laughs) what men want in the dating game, like, what are you seeing? What do men want? You know, us women have some idea or we talk to certain men. You know, each man seems to want something different, but some want pretty much the same what kind of common threads do you see uh when it comes to what men want when they're dating because i'm seeing some things and i'm hearing some things but i want to hear from a man i mean it depends on what type of guy you're talking about depends on what he's into and the reason why i said that if he's a entertainer or a working class guy or a guy that's just you know kind of well off it, it's, it's going to vary but at the end of the day guys want respect from a woman they want mm-hmm. mutual respect mm-hmm. they want a woman to uh make their life easier mm-hmm. in some type of way mm-hmm. you know some people say some people say a oh, partnership or whatever mm-hmm. you, whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. but they want the woman when their friends look at them they, they want their friends to be like yeah she's yeah she's the one man you know they they guys we we want that we we want our woman to make us look good in front of our peers we we might not say it mm. but every guy every guy wants that mm. they want that they, that you can call it validation whatever but every guy wants that it's like being on a red carpet and you you see her like yeah that's his that's denzel washington wife you see her man uh, <laughs> She still look good. Shout out to Pauletta Washington. <laughs> She's like 77 years old. Whatever, right? But so, that's so, that's so, see, we, women we, we pay want, attention. We like, that. We, and, we like that type of stuff. And men, if you're watching it live or the playback, um, let us know. What do you think in the chat, whether it's, like I said, live or playback whenever you're watching this? Because I'm not a man, but I think that you are on to something. I must agree with you but uh, i've never heard it put that way so i'm glad that you did so you're saying even if a man doesn't say it or but he wants someone who he could be proud of is it about the looks is about the whole package what is it where you want your man to be like you done your your friend to be like man you done good yeah it's about the whole package Uh, a guy wants to feel like like I'm the top dog I'm, you know, out of all my buddies. Mm. It might not necessarily be true. But <laughs> he, he, he wants to feel like yo, I, yo, know, like yo, I got a bad. My, she's bad, you know. Right. You know now, like there's some guys that you know go uh, go over the board and keep telling, hey man, you you, you got a good looking woman. Like yeah, how many times are you gonna say that, bro? <laughs> you know some guys go overboard, but we like that secretly, <laughs> you know. And then the last thing is uh, a guy wants a woman that has probably haven't done anything with anybody else that he that she done with him. Like you talking about that. intimately, sexually, you talking yeah. about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that hard to find? Because some people might have the same rhythm doing the same thing. <laughs> That's that's going to come down to what type of guy you are, mm. or, and and how a woman sees you, mm-hmm. you know, her um perception of you. That's what mm-hmm. that's going to come down. To. Because and the reason why I say that because, you know, just like I know, most women don't they don't treat every guy the same. Mm-hmm. So, 
that's that's what it's gonna come down to what type of guy you are and how she sees you and and this is gonna and this is gonna be based on how she was raised mm -hmm. that's true what she thought when she was growing up that's true and 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 how and how y'all meant yeah and where y'all meant yeah yeah Everybody, we're, if you're just tuning in uh, right now in the mid-show, we're talking to author and podcaster LaPaz. Uh, LaPaz, is it LaPaz or LaPaz? I always want to make sure I say it right. It's Lopez. Lo oh, it's Lopez. And I don't know why I was calling. Why didn't you say that earlier? I was like, I thought it was Lopez. <laughs> you said you don't care. I thought it was Lopez. But then I was like, it's not Lopez. Okay, but you're hearing what Lopez says. I'm a stickler for getting people's names right. And I meant to re-ask you uh, to make sure, because I know on your podcast I was, I was saying it right. But um, did you hear what he said? We're tuning in to uh, Shine with Candelanese right now, already in progress. If you're just picking it up right now, live. Um, in season 11 on Shine with Candelanese, we're focusing on relationships, right? Because I asked you guys, what did you want me to be? What, what focus did you want me to really hone in on? And you all said relationships. So throughout this whole season, that's what we're doing. So people have been sharing amazing stories. People have been talking about different parts of relationships. And this episode, we are talking about what men really are looking for. And we're going to get into some online dating as well. But you're speaking, Lopez, let me tell you something. I'm going to keep saying your name now. But you're speaking <laughs> the truth. And a lot of people don't even put it that way. Um, why do you think, do you think that men are really upfront with what they want with women or are they testing the women to see how they are to see if they meet within what they want without saying it? No, mo most guys can't get away with being honest with women. Mm. They, they can't get away with it because they, most of the time they start off one way and then as the relation, as the time goes by, five, ten years go by, and then they try to switch up. Mm. And they'll be like, oh, okay, I'm going to tell the truth now. That's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And that, that's usually when the relationship starts to go down. Mm -hmm. You know, and most guys, um, I've found that they don't have the confidence to be honest with women. They feel like if I be honest with her, she's going to leave. She won't mm. talk to me. Or whatever, and, and if you don't know somebody, I mean, why are you even thinking like that? If you mm. don't know her, and she don't know you, and they feel like, well, they don't have the confidence to feel like, hey, I can meet somebody else. But they don't, a lot of guys are kind of like, you know, they just don't have the confidence and feel like they can be honest with women. It's 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 sad, but it, but it's true. But you you said something that has me thinking about what you said in the, at the top of the show. You say that a lot of women have insecurities. Will you say that a lot of men in that area have insecurities as well? So both people oh, are yeah. working with insecurities. Yeah, a lot. Of, yeah, a lot of guys are insecure as well. Yeah, a lot of guys are insecure. But um, why do you think people don't talk about that often? Like they'll talk about women being insecure, but they don't often talk about men being insecure. Men are human beings too. So I, a hundred percent believe that they are insecure i have met some insecure men and i don't see that being less manly i think that we really need to normalize us just being human beings and we're really trying to figure it out both men and women well there's not a lot of spaces for guys to talk talk like that mm -hmm. well, most of the time if you turn on the television there's, there's talk shows it's full of women true there's uh you know, The View and all these shows. There's mm -hmm. so many of them on the TV today. Mm -hmm. There's magazines and they cater to women. They, there's not a lot of spaces for guys to voice their opinion. So a lot of guys kind of go along and get along. They'd be like, okay, that, I guess I'll just do what everybody, uh, every other guy is doing and hopefully things will turn out well. Yeah. Sometimes it does and I'm <laughs> doing <laughs> Yeah. No, that's real, but that's yeah. real. And I totally agree with you. Men need a place to be able to be vulnerable too. 
these men out here dating, do you think they're vulnerable and they're really looking for love? Or what do you think that they're really looking for? I think there's a lot of guys out here that they're not happy. Mm -hmm. They um they do they do the best they can with what they got and whatever situation mm -hmm. they might be in. But if you really if you really was the you know, you catch a guy at the bar or someplace like that, <laughs> he'd be like, even if and he might have his woman with him. Mm -hmm. I've I, I met couples at the bar, and I, if you talk to the woman, mm -hmm. it's like she's she's happy. Like, oh, I'm so happy to be with him. We've been together for 10, 15 years. And, <laughs> and, and, and when she goes to the restroom, you talk to the guy, and it's like, it's the opposite. It's the opposite of what she just told me. He's like, oh, man. I, I never do it, bro, brother. <laughs> wait, wait, hold it. up. So you said, okay, I, I want people to really catch this. And people like Kendall, I already caught it. I caught it. But you're saying when the couple is together at the table, the woman is like, oh, my, like they say on TikTok, my man, my man, my man. Oh, I love our relationship. It's so amazing. I love him. Mwah, 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 mwah. And the guy is just sitting there. As soon as she get up, he's like, help me. Rescue me from this relationship. It's a mess. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys are kind of like they. They, I think a lot of a lot of guys get to a point where they'll just go along with whatever whatever the woman wants. They'll just go along with it. It, it doesn't matter what it is either. It doesn't matter what it is. You name it. <laughs> and, and whatever makes her happy, he'll go along with it after some uh, after a, a certain point. Because a lot of guys look at it like, man, you know, I don't want to get a divorce and have to start all over again, you know, and um, let's just try to keep it going and keep the peace, you know, and um, I'll just settle. Take, I'll just settle and take care, try to take care of my needs elsewhere or, or, or something. That's usually, a lot of guys, are like, I know a lot of guys that are like that, mm. you know, and I, and I know a lot of women that are like that too. You know, so it is it's sad but true, you know. And this is why you have a mm. lot of um uh uh people live alternative lifestyles. Mm. That's where a lot of that stuff comes mm. comes from because people um are not being fulfilled and they don't necessarily they might not necessarily be happy. So and and then some people say, Well, that's have an open marriage. <laughs> if that's where a lot of that comes stems from, they, they, so it's kind of like they don't want to get a divorce because it's, everything is convenient. So it's cheaper and, you know, to keep her. So it's cheaper to keep yeah. her, keep the peace. They don't gotta ruffle the feathers or shake the boat. What they can do is have their lifestyle with cheating and 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 having open relationships. And um, well, well, if it's open relationship, it ain't no cheating. No, more. no. So they're either having. You so do you think people are having open relationships because of that, or they're just oh, yeah. keeping it quiet and cheating? Oh, I would say a large percentage of couples, the open relationship stems from them not being happy or fulfilled in mm -hmm. some type of way. What if it's a woman's idea? Yeah. Do you think a woman has Most that idea? Oh, okay. So you're saying so she can keep her man and let him give him a pass or something? Well, I wouldn't say that. But I would say in most cases, it's the woman's idea for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Sometimes she just not, she's just not into the guy like that no more. Mm -hmm. But she might say, oh, he's a good provider. Yeah. He's a great guy or whatever. I just want to see him happy. Or the guy or, or the guy might mm -hmm. might not be attracted to her like, like he used to. Mm. Or maybe he wasn't ever attracted to the guy. Maybe she just settled. Maybe she just said, hey, mm -hmm. there wasn't, nobody was mm -hmm. checking him for me like that. Mm. And he was here and wanted to be with me. So I... She just settled. I've heard women say that. So, Lopez, you're talking right because I have heard women say that. I have heard personal people that I know, and I have heard clients say that. 
Like, well, he was not, I've literally heard someone say this about her husband. Well, he was nice enough and he treated me good. I really wasn't in love with him, but he was nice enough. And I was blown by that, but I can't say I was surprised because I've heard women, you know, say that or someone's marrying for money or marrying for security or marrying, you know, for for other, for citizenship or whatever, right? But they're not really head over heels with the guy. And um, I've heard that so many times. And you said because they don't want to be alone or is it because it's the status quo being married or having a fiance or dating somebody, you think that nobody wants to say I'm single? I think a lot of people, they they don't want to break up. It, it's, it's convenient to stay together and shame. Can't forget about that. And what? Shame. 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 I don't want to be shamed. I don't mm. want to be afraid of what the, the parents might mm. think and what the kids, might, how the kids might feel. A lot of people just, just, they just, stick, they just find other means, another guy, another girl, uh, have a boyfriend on the side yeah. or something, some way, somehow. They're like, hey, we, we just got to work it out, you know, because we ain't, uh, we ain't getting no. That's like Will Smith and. Jordan. I was just getting ready. You to. I was waiting for you to finish your sentence, and I yeah. was going to say that they were like they're yeah. not. They're not getting divorced, no matter what they're going through, no matter what it is. They're not doing that. They they made a commitment to stay married and be married and go through the ebbs and flows. Now you have on one hand some say that's what marriage is about. Like it's for better or for worse that you stick through the tough times. You do all that. And some might say, well, they need to get a divorce if they're doing, you know, you see it on social media. They need to get a divorce if da, 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 da. But I don't think that they do. I think those are the two people can that can determine whether they're going to stay together and they're going to honor their vows. And I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, some people think, well, he needs to leave her. But, you know, it goes both ways. Like I read Will Smith's book multiple times. I've read Jada's book multiple times, right? And people think that Will, I love Will Smith. I've read his book a million times, but people think that he is this saint and she's a terror, but she dealt with a lot. And it's not about point, a point system. Well, he dealt with this, but she dealt with this. If they decided that that's their marriage and they can get through it, like who is anybody else to say anything different? Yeah, I mean... At the end of the day, you can have any any type of relationship you want. You mm-hmm. just have to find that person that's mm-hmm. that's that's down, downward. Yeah. That's all. You know, I don't. Um, I mean, what other people think about your marriage is, it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I got the question, and then we're gonna go into online dating. I got the question that everybody wants to know, and you know, they're going around saying black men don't do this, but do all men cheat? That's a question that's been going on since the beginning of time. And I know you're married, so you better tread lightly. <laughs> but keep it real. No, all, no, all guys don't cheat. I agree. No, I, I know some guys that have been faithful to one woman. I agree. Yeah, I know. I know some guys have been faithful, man. There's some guys that should be with one woman. Mm-hmm. And, and the reason why I say that because uh, out out in these streets can be a little tricky sometimes. How so? And, um, <laughs> things ain't, things ain't fair out here. It can be a little. Sometimes it can be a little dangerous. It depends on who you're dealing with. And I think some guys don't have enough, if any, street smarts. Mm-hmm. So I think some guys shouldn't be with one woman. That's not. I think some women should be with one guy. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, and there's some. It's not. The, the, this it's different out here. It's yeah, the way it used to be when 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 grandpa and grandma was out here. <laughs> it's real in these it's streets. <laughs> these streets oh, are dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> They're emotionally dangerous, right? So so let's talk about. Yeah. Let's you talk. Really... No, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. I want you to finish what you were saying. 
I know it's a slight delay. No, I was just gonna say that. Um, yeah, you just. I was gonna say that you. Um, th- there's a lot that comes along. You know, mm-hmm. your know, grandpa and grandma relationship used to be yes. today. It's different. It's it's not the same. People are different. People are raised different. Yeah. Different environment. So yeah. But at the end of the day, there's some. There, there's a lot of guys out here that are faithful. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. I agree with you. I don't think all men cheat. Some people say, okay, well, do you think that all men have cheated? They might not be a cheater currently, but have all have all men have they, you know, have they cheated dibble dabble? And I do believe that um all men don't cheat. A lot of women say all men cheat. I remember I was watching Braxton Family Values, Tony Braxton and her sisters and her mom. And um if anybody knows the story, the dad cheated on the mom and had a relationship for many years within his marriage. And Miss E, Tony Braxton's mom, was like, all men cheat except Obama. (laughs) Michelle ain't playing that. Right, Michelle is not playing that. He does not want to play with Michelle from Chicago. He don't want none of that smoke. (laughs) Oh, but I, I think that people can have healthy relationships and that's what I promote, healthy relationships. And I know everybody hasn't had all healthy relationships. I know I have not, um, but I have had some. And going forward, that's all I'm entertaining is healthy relationships. How do you think people can pursue healthy relationships? And then we're going to um, close with online dating. I think people people just have to be honest, as honest as they can be, and um, you know, get to know the other person, and you know, hopefully, y'all be on the same page. And if hopefully it works out, if it doesn't work out, that, that's fine. It, it's okay. I just one meant to be together and just move on. Yeah. You know. I totally agree. Be mature about the situation because both parties, I believe men and women deserve healthy loves and healthy relationships. Um, And like you were saying, going back to the beginning, so many people have so much gook and the waters are murky when it comes to their past or childhood. Like you said, who raised you? All of that matters. What experiences have you had in relationships and or in, in childhood and then adolescent and then going into uh, relationships. I, I often say, how was your first experience in a relationship? Because that can be an indicator. And for women, who was the first man who loved you? Was it your father, your grandfather, your uncle, you know, and men the same way? Like what kind of relationship did you have with your mom? Did you see love? Did she show love? Did she allow you to emote and shed tears? Did your dad allow you? Because some men, are cut right at, at as children. They don't know how to be vulnerable because somebody is saying men don't cry and they seven years old. They're not a man. And that goal trickles into um, their relationship. All right, let's talk about online dating. Yes or no? Nah. Let's talk about it. What do you think? I think online dating is difficult for most people. And I, I you know, I, 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 I teach... And, you know, I show a lot of guys what I've done and the, a lot of results that I've done. But uh, online, if you want to meet somebody, online dating is the hardest way. You think? I think it's the oh, easiest. Yeah. I think it's the easiest. I started online dating when AOL was AOL chat rooms. I think yeah, that's I think the easiest way. Why do you think it's most, the hardest? Not for most people. Talk about it. Not for most people. And I do workshops on it, so people are very leery. I do know that. But tell me why you think it's the hardest. Because there's a lot of of the wrong information being uh, put out here online that, and everybody's basically saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. And and P.S. and by the way, I've tried all of that stuff that people talk about. Mm -hmm. It didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let me tell you what worked for me was communication mm-hmm. works and I, I had I, I you know I have an advantage than most people because 
I'm a writer. I know what to say. You know, I know how to respond, you know, based on the response that I might get. Like, I don't, if you look at it, my, like, dating profile, I don't have the best pictures in the world. I can have better pictures. But people will say, hey, you should have, get you a, a photographer and you get, you get the best pictures you have. And uh, you should be smiling and have, look like you're having fun. It's the same old, same old thing, <laughs> which, is, which is a given, right? But there's there's a lot of people that have that in their profile and they get no results. And even if they like happen to, you know, get someone to respond to their email, well, they don't know what to say yeah. most of the time. Yeah. And once they do, they'll, they'll go back and forth for three to six months, two years with somebody online. Yeah. I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> So you say no. So if you say no, how do people meet someone? If they're out there dating, how does that man find that woman or that woman find that man? And shout out to everybody who has found their forever loves online. There's so many success stories uh, with women finding their Prince Charming and men and um men finding their queen, you know what I mean? And living happily ever after, so to speak. Not without issues and problems because we're two people coming together, relationships. But um, what do you tell that person who's like, Lopez, I don't go out. I don't meet anybody. How can I find my forever person? How can I find my person? You don't have to go out, but I would say the easiest way, the best way, in my opinion, is to meet somebody through somebody that you know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. that, that's the the easiest and best way, in my opinion, that mm -hmm. I've met people. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that you already know is like a mutual mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. You know, and that way, when you get introduced to this person, there's no guard up. Yeah, there's no. You know, there's no bait and switch. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. But if you meet someone online, there's like a filtering process. Yeah. You got to go through. You don't really know if that's the person on yeah. the other side of the computer. Yeah. You know, but when you meet someone through somebody, it's like, you know, yeah, that's your friend, you know, somebody, somebody that y'all hopefully trust, you know, and then, you know, there's no guard up. There's no, you know, the, the, uh, basically all you got to do is just show up and yeah. just don't say anything stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you got to trust that person um, to be able to know you yeah. and know your taste and to be able to know what you're looking for and like, because ultimately it's the two people. Somebody can play matchmaker or connect, but then the two people have to have to gel. Um, right. Would you say? Yeah, I mean, the, the your friend that's doing the introduction, hopefully they they know enough about you and the other person. That yeah. way they can make, that way they can determine if y'all a good match or not. Yes. So how did you meet your wife and how did you find your person? Oh, I, I was just, um, I got invited to a, a day party. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a friend of mine that was having it. And... I went to the party like, you know, just like a regular a bar and grill or whatever. Mm -hmm. Probably like uh, six in the afternoon or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was on the balcony with a friend and I just approached her. Nice. Nice. Was she receptive or was she like, who is this? Was she no, looking she at you like this? Away. No, she actually walked away. Because <laughs> she was like... Who are you? She was on a balcony like Rapunzel looking down at you, peasant, like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, we, we joke about this a lot. We, she actually walked away, and I don't know where she went. But I know um, <laughs> I, st I stayed out there for uh, like uh, five minutes, and I went to the bar, and she was at the bar. And that's when I said, I said something. I don't remember what I said. And um, we kind of hit it off, and um, and I ended up leaving. And I just I got a, I got a phone number, and I called her like two days later, 
I mean, that's that's pretty much how, how I went. So how long has it been? When was that? Man, I was nineteen ninety nine. Wow! So twenty what twenty five years ago? That's beautiful. Yeah. So see, yeah. so you so yeah. you were you were in the old school dating, like you walk up to somebody yeah. and you say can I have your phone number? And somebody's writing it down on a piece of paper. It's not like, give me your phone. You see these young people now, it's like they don't even exchange phone numbers. They just say, what's your IG? Or give me your phone. Like, that's not attractive to somebody say, give me your phone. Because first of all, I don't want you touching my phone. I don't know where your hands have been. And who said that I'm just going to give you, you know what I mean? So I don't, don't let no grown, grown man try that. Cause that's not going to work, but that's how young people are doing it. Now they're just giving the IGs. And I think it's kind of smart though. Let's see what you're posting about, what you're talking about. Before I give you my phone number, let me give you this public information already and then narrow it down. Back in the day, they were writing your numbers on the, on the piece of paper and handing it, hoping you didn't lose it or memorizing it and all of that. So I think that that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, is there anything as we end that you want to share with the audience about finding that person, online dating, or something that the women need to know men want? I would say if, you, if you're going to learn, if you want to meet people online, um, try and find, find someone that uh, has been there and done that. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's, not, um, it's not really that difficult. Um, mm-hmm. I think... A lot of the, the information that people put out online, mm-hmm. people are telling people to do one thing, but they're doing something else yeah. in those cases. So, you know, I talk about a lot of that stuff on, on my on my website. You know, I, I teach, I'm teaching, I've been meeting people online since, I don't know, 15 years now. Yeah. It's, uh, I met singles, couples, groups. Mm-hmm. It's the... It's the, and I started doing this when, uh, for business purposes. Yeah. And I just yeah. took I applied the same. I applied the same skills mm-hmm. I learned in business to online dating. Wow! So I, if you need any help with that, hey, just check out my website. You know. Okay, please give your website to the people. Okay, it's, it's chooseyourrelationships.com. dot com. And That's chooseyourrelationships.com. dot mm-hmm. com. And how can people get in touch with you on social media? And is that the website you want them to go to uh, for more information about you? You can even go to my YouTube channel, it's Love Can't Wait, or go to my website, chooseyourrelationships.com. Everything's there. All right, all right. Look, I told y'all he was going to keep it all the way real. I really enjoyed you, Lopez, and I think that you were really right on target with everything that you said. Love Can't Wait. Let's for, before we before we end, why can't love wait? Because if you don't have a good relationship with yourself, if you don't love yourself, it's going to be almost impossible to love someone else. And I love that's it. why I love can't wait. And I love that we circle <laughs> back to where we started. That I couldn't have planned that better. Lopez, you know what? We going I'm going to have you on again, you know, I hopefully I'm on your podcast again and and we work together with this relationship thing. I know we talked about some things, but I think that this was great. Did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, for sure. Yes. Last question, what brings you joy? Oh, just spending time with my friends and family. I love that. Everybody, this is Shine with Kendall and East, Season 11. We are focusing on relationships. If you're just tuning in to Season 11, go back and listen to the stories and the journeys of other people. We had some amazing show. And I say we, me and my audience, had some amazing shows thus far. The season is not over yet. You know, I hope Lopez broke it down. I uh, said, thanks for the advice. I love the theme and the vibe. Yes, yes, yes. So all you single folks, all you married folks that want healthy relationships and you want to continue a solid, positive relationship, 
you all can do it, but both people have to be on one accord. And I'll say it again, and Lopez said it earlier, communication, communication, communication. Thank you all for tuning in to Shine with Kendella Nice. Remember, you are a star. Don't allow anyone to dim your shine. Till next time, God bless. Peace. Thank you, Lopez. Appreciate it. Yes. Make sure you support him and follow all that he does. Bye, y'all. All right, so what did y'all think? I really want to know what you thought about this episode. Love Can't Wait is his podcast. Choosyourrelationships.com. Make sure you check them out, um, each one of those. And he talks about a lot of different things, as you can see here. I'm not going to go over everything, obviously, because you just heard him. But what I am going to do is... Hmm. Tell you my takeaway from today's show. All right, it's time for this week's gem takeaways from today's show. All right, there were so many gems in this episode. Wouldn't you agree? Some of them you're probably like, oh, okay, I knew that. Or I thought that as far as do all men cheat. Hopefully we know that you can't lump them all together. But my takeaway uh, it was difficult to decide which one, so I may have a couple. Um, you don't have to fake it to make it, he says. Someone knows the answer in our village. He said that his parents raised him to tell to for, to teach him that they don't know everything, but they can go get someone who does. And I think that is so important um, uh, to have that village. Because everybody doesn't have the answer to everything. Everybody doesn't know the answer. But somebody in your village knows the answer you're looking for. And another takeaway was when he said um, women sabotage relationships. That's so true. He said when things are going well in dating and relationships, many women disappear. Think of the man is going to leave like the last one. All of a sudden they say they're busy or they make up something. Um making pretty much the new man pay for the other man and ladies you got to stop doing that because you deserve all that God has for you all the goodness and don't I, I don't want you to allow and this is men too don't allow the last one to stop you from loving the new one or finding love in a new space and way um so he had so many different gems in this episode please let me know in the comments or if you're able to rate this podcast what are some of the gems you got out of this episode of shine with Kendall Lanise um he also said what men want is respect we've heard that and to make their lives easier they want a woman to validate them in a certain degree do you agree with that uh, he had some interesting points and I'm glad that he shared them with us all right, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If this blessed you or informed you in a way that it hadn't prior to watching or listening to this podcast, please share this out. Don't be stingy with the knowledge. Share the love. Remember, tell a friend about Shine with Kendall and East. All right, y'all. God bless y'all. Thank you for listening to this episode of Shine with Kendall Lanise. For more information about me, visit KendallLanise.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at Kendall Lanise. For bookings and life coaching consultations, please visit my website for more information. God bless y'all. Peace. Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real talk for real people. Let's shine together.